Thanks to the new faded engram system from Xur, I was finally able to get the Lion Rampants for my Titan. Being the last vanilla exotic I needed to finish my collection, it made me realise that there's still quite a few vanilla exotics I've yet to cover. Since we're in Curse of Osiris now, and a lot more players are familiar with subclass builds, I figured I should make a rapid fire review for the remainder exotics of each class. So starting with the Titan, I'll give a brief background on the exotic, make a few optimised suggestions on builds and environments to use them in, then move on to the next one. So let's get started. The Titan's Crest of Alpha Lupi has returned in D2, with similar perks to its predecessor. The exotic perk will generate an extra orb of light from supers, and will send out a healing pulse when your barricade is deployed. Generating extra orbs is always going to be useful to teammates, and the healing pulse from the barricade has absolutely saved my life a few times. The amount of health the healing pulse gives you is only a portion of your health bar, but it's still enough to be worthwhile. I would also suggest you change the mod to a Paragon mod of your choosing. This chess piece is neutral, but I found it to work well with the Code of the Fire Forged in the Sunbreaker skill tree, since there aren't a whole lot of exotics that specifically work with this tree. Places to use this exotic would be in most PvE content with a fire team, since generating extra orbs is pointless to do while playing solo. So strikes, pop events, parts of the raid like the Baths and Callus, even the Argos site would be pretty good, and also in the Crucible, but its effectiveness will depend on how close you stick to your teammates there, since the Healing Pulse has a fairly short range. Up next is the ACD0 Feedback Fence, another exotic returning from D1. The exotic perk has kept the same theme as its former self too, where getting melee attacks by enemies will unleash an area of effect explosion. The difference with the D2 version of the feedback fence is that you can build up additional charge by getting melee kills while wearing these gauntlets. Then by getting melee attacked, the explosion will be more potent. This additional charge can be brought up to 3 stacks. Any further melee attacks beyond that will only reset the timer, which lasts for about 9 seconds. Before the Curse of Osiris DLC, these gauntlets were woefully bad. Now after some changes, they're better but probably still not good enough. In regards to a build, I'd still say the Code of the Juggernaut is your best bet, since the Frontal Assault melee attack deals sizable damage on its own, giving your feedback fence the greatest chance of finishing off an enemy. In D1, these gauntlets were pretty good in the Abyss section of Crota's End, since you're fighting waves upon waves of Thralls. I'd still say that Thralls are the ideal enemy for these gauntlets, since you can one-shot melee them. Their only attack is a melee attack, and they don't hit very hard. Anything stronger than Tier 1 enemies will take very little damage from the feedback fence, even at the maximum stack count of 3 where the damage the explosion deals is still less than a melee attack. Places to use it are uh, maybe Savathun's Song Strike or the Lake of Shadow Strike, since they both have thralls, but even then, I'd still suggest going with something else. Crucible is probably again not going to be worth it. It will still take at least two melees to kill a full health target. Sure, there might be a few occasions where the feedback explosion could kill them, but in my experience, using something like the Syntheseps will go a lot further, literally. Next we have the Lion Rampant, which provides a simple bonus to your jump ability. The exotic perk will give you more maneuverability while you're in the air. More simply, you'll glide for a few seconds longer than you otherwise would have. This is actually a pretty good bonus at times, since you can make jumps you typically wouldn't have been able to, but I still feel like it's an exotic you'd switch to for a purpose, then switch back once that purpose is complete. Maybe I'm not giving them enough credit, since they can throw people off in the Crucible and let you completely skip portions of the Eater of Worlds raid, but for the bulk of content, having a longer glide distance isn't all that helpful. As for builds, the only thing that's going to have some relevance is the jump type, and for me, I go with strafe jump. And finally to finish off the vanilla exotics for the titan, we have the dune marches, another d1 exotic brought forward. The exotic perk will increase your sprint speed, and after sprinting for a few seconds, you will build up a static charge that will chain damage to nearby enemies. Let's just quickly see what this does. You will get the linear actuators perk show up on the side of your screen after sprinting for a few seconds, and this charge will remain on you for about 6 seconds after you stop sprinting. Melee an enemy while you have this charge will fork lightning out to nearby enemies. The amount of damage it deals is pretty low, but it should cause a few enemies to stagger. To build with the Dune Marches, there is no requirement to use any particular subclass, which actually surprised me a bit, since I assumed this exotic would only work with the shoulder charge like melee attacks. But no, it works with all melee attacks, charged or otherwise. To recommend a subclass, maybe try Code of the Protector for Sentinel, or Code of the Juggernaut for Striker, but again, there is no wrong subclass to use. The best place to use the dunes, it's hard to say. PvE wouldn't be really worth it, since the bonus sprint speed and small damage chain lining is pretty underwhelming. It's actually pretty comparable to the feedback fence in terms of performance. In the Crucible it might have a place. I wouldn't expect the chain lining to do crazy amounts of damage, but it should at least weaken a few nearby enemies. The problem is that you need to get into a dangerous situation for this exotic to be useful. So anyway, these are my thoughts on the remaining vanilla exotics for the Titan. All that's left now is the Aeon Safe, which I'll probably cover with the whole Aeon family, and Helm of Saint-14, which I do not own yet. So what do you guys think? Would you say the changes made to Feedback Fence and Dune Marches are enough to make them usable? Let me know in the comment section below.
Thanks for watching, guys.